others, or you can grow your economy by 30%. What do you want to do? You can, you can uh, throw prisoners of conscience in jail, or you can join the international community. Your choice. What do you want to do? I've been very direct with Vietnamese leaders on this, on this, uh, this topic. There has been a dramatic drop in arrests, and as people are being let out of, out of jail, there, the number of prisoners of conscience has gone down. It's still too high. I'm not saying that we resolved the problem. We haven't. There's a long way to go. But we are not satisfied with a system where the Vietnamese let somebody out of jail who flies to California or to Dulles Airport, and then they put somebody else in jail right behind him. We are not satisfied. That is not a way the United States will do business. So we are insisting on systemic change, on legal reform, so that Vietnam's constitution, that Vietnam's laws will catch up with the 2013 constitution and with its international commitments, especially the international covenant on uh, civil and human rights, civic and human rights. We have, the Vietnamese have, have ratified the convention against torture, and they've ratified the convention on persons with disabilities. Uh, in recent months, they have increased the number of churches that they register and religious organizations that they commit to register. It's still too slow. You know, the United States was founded on, on religious freedom. We don't think churches should have to register at all. And we continue to make this point. They need to make it easier for people to, to uh, express their views, to, to worship in the way they choose. It's not, it's not moving fast, but it's moving in the right direction. So I don't want to paint a picture that it's all rosy, that the, the progress is all, the movement is all in one direction. It's not. We have, we have setbacks. We move forward and then we move back. When uh, Senator McCain visited a few weeks ago, I invited a number of activists to come and meet with Senator McCain. One of them had been beaten up a few weeks before, he a picture of him had gone around in the, in the on the internet. He, his head was covered with blood. He had to have stitches. This was after dropping off his son at school. I said, "Are you sure you want to come and meet Senator McCain? I don't want to put you at risk." And he said, "Yes, I will come and meet Senator McCain." And the other people who came with him were equally brave. They knew that they risked further harassment. They knew they risked being beaten up, but they wanted to come and meet with us. And I said, uh, do you want a photo with us? And they said, yes, we want a photograph with you. We, are, we know that what we, we are fighting for is worth taking risks. And I said, here's my phone number. I want you to all have it on speed dial. If you are harassed as a result of meeting with Senator McCain, I want to know instantly, and Senator McCain wants to know instantly, and we will, we will call people at the top levels in the Vietnamese government, and we will say this is unacceptable. The good news is they were not harassed. We were able to protect them from further harassment. I can't, I don't promise, I don't think I can protect everybody from harassment. I know I can't, but I know that the Vietnamese are watching, they want, a relationship with us, and they know that the price of a good relationship with us is further progress on human rights, further progress on the rights of workers, uh, and we will insist upon that. Uh, what, two more comments, and then I will open open for questions.